Welcome everybody to our next industry spotlight where we highlight key and interesting figures in the tourism industry around the world. Today, we are going close to home, which is New York City where I live. And we have Emma Gust Gonzalez from New York City. And uh, she is the president of the Guides Association of New York. Emma, really happy to have you here today. It's great to be here, Mitch. Thank you so much for having me. I love you because you are a tour guide, just like me. And tour guides often have interesting stories when they, how they get into this industry. Can you tell us a little bit about your past and how you got into guiding? Well, I became a tour guide about 11 years ago. And um, before that, I was an academic. I was an adjunct professor of art history for many, many, many years. I have my doctorate in art history, uh, specializing in the Italian Renaissance, so very different from New York City, which is my specialty now. But I love to guide and I always say, the reason I like guiding so much and I've taken to it so well is because it's like teaching. Uh, I want to tell people information. I want to help them understand things and they're in a different way, uh, but I don't have to grade. So it's really, it's a nice thing to do. <laughs> okay, because the grading and the, the academic bureaucracy can get a, a little disheartening and guiding always keeps me on my toes. As an art history PhD, you must love the museums in New York. Do you have a favorite room in a favorite museum somewhere? It's hard to pick a room, but definitely my favorite museum is the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I've actually worked there in various capacities for over 25 years now. I'm a longtime volunteer in the library at the Metropolitan Museum. So I love to do research there. I love just wandering around. Um, it's hard to pick, it's like saying, Who's your favorite child? But uh, I, I adore the Met, every part of it. I'd say probably my, I have a very soft spot for uh, European paintings. Amazing. So not only are you an art historian and a guide, but you are also guiding royalty in New York because you are the current president of the Guides Association of New York. Guides associations are something that a lot of people hear about. Uh, GANIC, which is what the Guides Association of New York is called, is very active. Could you tell us a little bit about GANIC and about the Guides Association of New York? Okay, so GANIC, the, the Guides Association of New York City, is one of the oldest um, and one of the largest guides associations in the United States. Uh, it was founded in 1974, originally actually as an association of multilingual guides, and then it expanded to be uh, the Guides Association for um, New York City guides. Um, even though we have guides from all over the place who have their license in New York City to guide in New York City. And what we do is we provide a lot of support and a lot of networking for our guides. Our website has a jobs board, so guides can look for work there. Um, guides are able to post their profiles so people can find them. We get contacted uh, through the GANIC website. Um, and most of all, especially in these days, we're providing a lot of support, a lot of information for our guides about what's happening on a city level, on a state level, on a national level, in terms of tourism and in terms of touring. So guides associations can be found in all, most of the major cities around the United States and indeed around the world. In fact, GANIC is part of the National Federation for Tourist Guides Associations called NFTGA and the World Federation of Tourist Guides Associations, which is the WFTGA. So there's a lots, of, lots of letters and they all, um, we come together to help each other. So to make sure our guides have the latest information, to make sure our guides are prepared. Uh, GANIC does a lot of work with certification. We have a wonderful certification program. That's an optional thing for guides to do. Um, that's a great paid course that, that guides take. It's a skills building course. But one of the best things about GANIC are our fabulous FAM tours, a familiarization tour. And so our FAM tours are a great way for guides to guide other guides. And so that means as a guide giving a FAM, it's a perfect way to test a new tour, to get a lot of feedback and guides will give lots and lots of feedback, but also it's a great way to share the material we know. And I've been on so many FAMs where I've learned so much about New York City neighborhoods, about New York City history, um, lots of different things. So our FAM tours are really one of the most popular aspects of being a GANIC member. And they're for members only, and they're a lot, a lot of fun. 
I love it. You hit on some of Trip School's core values of lifelong learning. Guide should not stop learning, and also community. You learn together. You come together. You share your skills. As you've watched COVID nineteen decimate the guided industry, can you tell me what has Gannick been doing, uh, and what are some of the needs that you see that guides have right now and moving into the future? Well, one of the big things we did right off the get go was trying to keep our guides informed and letting them know what was happening. And Gannick sort of became a way to have all of that information in one place um, through our Virgil, through the newsletter that we started putting out. And at the in the first months of the pandemic, it was every week and we were giving people new information. Um, in just information about how to apply for pandemic unemployment assistance, all the different things that a guide could possibly need and that, you know, just people need and to make sure we're all keeping in touch and keeping an eye on each other. We had a few members who were ill. We actually unfortunately lost a few of our members to COVID-19. And so it was really, um, as you said, a strong, strong sense of community and making sure everyone was aware of what was happening. Uh, we put together a database of the tours that were lost of guides who um, lost groups coming in, you know, the groups canceled. And so we had a lot of hard information, concrete numbers that we were able to share uh, with the US Travel Association and other places that gave people a sense of how guides as entrepreneurs, as self-employed freelancers, how they, how hard it impacted them. And so we hope that that, um, we think that actually did make a difference. Let me ask you this. The role of the tour guide is, like you said, a freelancer, a very sort of precarious position in the tourism industry. What in the industry overall would you like to see changed or improved in relation to how tour guides exist in the tourism industry and in the industry in general? Well, one thing, and this is something that Gannick has been working on for a very long time, as well as the other associations, but really to um, guides need to be taken seriously. We are professionals. We know our material. Uh, I had one person say to me once, well, anybody can be a tour guide. You know, they, people who just like facts and information, uh, but that's not it. You can't just give anybody who's, um, you know, say a history buff or an art buff or an architecture buff a microphone and say, guide a group because there's so many other skills. And I think something that is really important that people need to be aware of is that tour guides are professionals. Um, I happen to work at an attraction. I work at the One World Observatory. I'm one of the guides there. And so people, they'll meet me and they'll speak to me and they say, oh, well, I didn't know this was actually a job. How did you train for this? How did you learn this? As you said, it's lifelong learning. It's constant, constantly updating our information and knowing uh, the, the most information we can to give our guests and to give our visitors, uh, but in a professional way and not just to be blurting out you know, facts and figures. We need to tell stories. We are storytellers. We need to make a compelling story. And so we can have a real impact on people's uh, perception of a location, their understanding of the history of a place. And so I think guides should be taken very seriously by the travel industry. We're often sort of the, you know, the low person on the totem pole and uh, the last minute thought, you know, oh, well, here's your guide, here's your group, go for it. They're entrusting us with a lot of people and they're entrusting us with a big part of their vacation. Um, sometimes we're the only person that a visitor will have contact with from a specific locale. And so we are ambassadors for those locales and we need to make sure that um, we put our best feet forward and that we give the best information in the very best way. One last question. Uh, we have a lot of people that are guides that are part of our community, but also a lot of tour operators, very large and very small. On that operator side, what are some of the things you would like to see as what a model tour operator would do in relation to their guides, how they could support them and what that uh, what that relationship looks like at its best? Well, at its best, I think it's um, uh, it should be a close and friendly relationship of um, collaboration. Uh, one thing that drives guides crazy is when a tour operator will just give you an itinerary and you look at it and you're thinking, 
what, how am I supposed to do all this in one day or in three hours? You know, ask the guides for advice, ask guides for feedback. Don't just give them stuff to do and say, go out and do it. And you have to do it this way. Um, the good guides know what they're doing and good guides can be trusted to do what's right. You give them you know, an outline, give them the points that need to be hit. Maybe give them, you know, a list of, of locations or landmarks that you want to be covered in your tour, but trust your guides and then get feedback from your guides. You know, make sure that um, they feel happy and they feel encouraged by, um, with, with support from, from the back end. you know, that they know that somebody in the office has their backs and somebody in the office is there in case they need anything while they're out um, on the field, uh, in the field, shall we say. And, you know, make sure your contracts take into account, you know, guides and the support they need, whether it's um, cancellations, whether it's um, just giving them the opportunities to have a little more control. I think sometimes guides feel a little out of control with the tour operators who may be like, oh, you have to do this, this, and this. We understand that an operator is selling a specific product and we want to give the best product that we can. But also um, I think tour operators, when they have a good guide and have experienced guides, they can um, trust us. They should be able to trust us. I love that. One last quick question. New York is a very, very big place. Is there a neighborhood that's a little off the beaten path for tourists that you love to show or love to go yourself? Well, that's a hard question because we're all like, I know, I don't know. tell them about it. Don't tell them about it. Just be, be generic. Just say Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. One of the five boroughs. Now, um, well, I mean, full disclosure, I actually live in New Jersey now, but all my work is in New York City. And when I lived in Manhattan, I lived in northern Manhattan up in Washington Heights. I lived above 181st Street. My stomping ground was um, Fort Tryon Park. My very first guiding job was going up to the cloisters. And it's such a jewel. And sometimes people, unless they're in, you know, northern Manhattan, sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to schlep all the way up there. It's worth the schlep. It's really, it's really fantastic. And um, yeah, I would say I, I like nature. I like outdoors. And to remind people that New York City has a lot, a lot, a lot of green space. And you can always find somewhere to commune with nature. And, and that's a fun thing to do while you're in, in the city. You mean there's another park besides Central Park? There is. There are lots of other parks. There are lots and lots of parks. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from us first. The president of Gannick lives in New Jersey. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that's fine. And that's amazing. And Emma, you're amazing. Thank you so much thanks for so sharing much. a little uh, piece of your wisdom. And thanks for everything you're doing for the guiding community. It's my pleasure. It really is. It's something I really take very seriously. I take to heart. I, I want to help guides. And um, I hope I'm doing a good job. And I love what Trip School does. You guys are great. So this was a real honor and a privilege to speak to you, Mitch. So thank you very much. And Trip School is a proud and uh, loving partner of Gannick as well. Yes, they uh, are. Yes, you are. One of our industry partners. And we are very, very happy to have you. So thank you, Mitch. And Alan, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. 